Hi there, I'm Graham Floyd, and in this video, I'm going to be taking a look at compression and how understanding it can help improve your guitar practice. That's coming up next. Picture this. You're playing some ripping shred guitar lick, and it sounds great. As you play, the notes just seem to fly out of your guitar. But then you accidentally step on your foot switch or pedal turning off the distortion and switching to your clean sound. Not only does it sound bad, but the very same lick that moments ago was a piece of cake to play, now feels like trying to walk through waist-deep mud. Why does this happen? You probably think it's the distortion that makes what you're playing feel easier, but you'd be wrong. It isn't the distortion, it's the compression. You've probably heard of compression before, and maybe even used it, but what is compression exactly? Well, to put it simply, compression is a form of signal processing that allows you to raise or lower the volume of a sound based on its original volume. So in other words, compression can make louder sounds quiet and quieter sounds loud. It can balance out the difference between louder and quieter notes to make them sound more consistent. Compressors are used all the time by guitar players to make strings sound more even when strumming, to bring out single notes when played between chords, and to add sustain when soloing. But what does this have to do with making your guitar playing feel easier? Well, going back to our example when our distortion is turned off, the reality is that anytime you have distortion being created, you have some kind of compression that's being applied to your guitar sound. This is why your playing feels easier when the distortion is on. As you play, it's the compression that makes the notes you play sound more consistent by compressing the notes and making them sound more alike. This is great if you're trying to make your solos sound better, but not so good if you're actually trying to improve your playing technique. This is because the compression can give you a false sense of how well you're actually playing. The compression is making all of the notes that you play sound the same. So even if you aren't actually playing the notes evenly and consistently, it will sound like you are. You think that you're playing really well, but when the distortion is turned off and the compression is removed, you get to hear what you really sound like. Bad. To overcome this compression issue and make sure that you're really developing solid playing technique, I recommend that you practice using the following three guitar tones. Tone number one, acoustically. What is acoustic? Oh, you mean a grandpa's guitars? A grandpa's guitars. Practicing without your amp will give you zero compression. It's just you and the strings. You won't be able to hide your flaws whatsoever, which is actually a really good thing when you're trying to improve your playing. Plus, in order to actually hear yourself with the amplifier turned off, you're going to have to play a little harder and bring the volume of the notes up a little bit. This is, gives an added bonus, which is that it actually helps to synchronize both of your hands together as you play. Tone number two, a clean tone. Clean as a whistle, Homer. With the clean sound, you're going to focus on making sure that you still have a nice consistent sound with each of the notes that you play. Even though the tone is clean, there's actually going to still be a little bit of compression that's applied to your guitar sound. However, it's not going to be enough to make a, a drastic difference to the sound you hear through the amp. Tone number three would be a distortion tone. The numbers all go to 11. Look right across the board. Even though when we turn our distortion on there's going to be a fair amount of compression that's added, you should still be practicing using your distortion sound. This is mainly to make sure that you are playing cleanly and accurately and that you're removing any unwanted sounds or string noise that you might not have heard when playing clean or acoustically without the amp. So to give you an example of the effect that compression can have when you're practicing. I've opened up a session in Cubase and I've recorded the same takes on my electric guitar and put them into three different tonal environments. 
we have an acoustic sound, we have a clean sound, and we have a distortion sound. So the first takes that I'm going to play, these are kind of sloppy playing, and I want you to try to hear the difference between uh, the consistency of the individual pick strokes in each of the three environments. And in fact, you can actually see it. The waveforms are bigger and smaller. Um, you're going to hear that more in the acoustic and clean sound, but in the distortion sound, it kind of gets masked. Uh, things sound more even because the compression is evening them out. Here we go. Here's the acoustic sound. that with the clean sound, you get a little bit more compression, uh, so you get it evening out slightly, but you can still hear the differences, and the distortion sound. Now I'm going to play an example of our three different tonal settings, but with more consistent playing. So you can even see once again in the waveforms that the individual pick strokes are more even in terms of volume and intensity. Uh, so here we go, starting with the acoustic sound. And let's try the clean sound. And the distortion sound. Okay, so you notice in these three examples, regardless of the tone, regardless of the amount of compression that the tone is providing, the sound of each pick stroke is relatively even. And again, this is coming from the playing and not being compensated for by any kind of compression. So try these three tones for yourself to help make sure that your playing technique is developing accurately and consistently. Thanks for watching this video. If you found this video at all helpful, please like and share with anybody else who you think might find it useful. And if you'd like more guitar related videos just like this, please subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions at all about this video, or you have suggestions for future topics, please post them in the comments below. I do try to answer every question that's posted, and I'll try to help you out if I can. Once again, thanks for watching. Until next time, cheers.